Yo, yo, it's your boys back from there. If you're watching on the YouTube video, it's like, don't worry. It's like, we, we do change clothes every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> We're still doing, we're just doing back I forgot back. to do my laundry. I don't. It's a good shirt. All right, let's just go straight into it. So if you are watching on YouTube, just go, let's just have a guy in the corner. You know how we do stuff, guys. You know, we fuck around a little bit first before, and then, you know, make, make the interviewee just uh, sit there awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not today. <laughs> so uh, if you see him right now, or if you're listening on, uh, on the podcast, um, we have coming from WA, Darius Douch. He is the co-promoter of uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix Australia. Very prestigious show, really great names. And then we're going to really get into the background of his story, going to Muay Thai, officiating that he does. And also like stack card, he's got coming up soon. Wicked card. Yeah. Darius, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. I feel very humbled. Cheers. Uh, it's all good, man. It's like, you know, it's hard not to get in contact with you with this huge card that you're coming up again, and especially with WA, like um, just getting in, doing awesome stuff again. Like, you yeah. know, us, us in New South Wales here, we're just sitting here just all jealous of shit, really. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not a bad card for local talent, is it? No, yeah. definitely not. So before we get into that, though, let's get into a little, little bit of your background. So, you know, sure. what first got you into Muay Thai and, and pulled you in? To the sport. Uh, I, I actually uh, I actually boxed at uh, Morley Police Boys and YMCA in Perth in about 1990. So I was about 17 uh, about 17 years of old, uh, age, and uh, I was working um, uh, and a newer mate who's now quite up. Uh, he's got a, a huge uh, gym uh, branches in Perth called Legion 13. He's uh, a, he's got right into his BJJ, Grayson West. And um, he's quite well known for BJJ in Perth. And um, he, uh, he was, we were boxing, he got me into boxing. So he started as a boxer. Sorry, no, I started as a boxer there and he got me into Muay Thai about three years later. He said, oh, check this out. So I did a couple of uh, classes with him and, um, you know, I, I love my boxing, but I got to admit my first Muay Thai lesson, I never went back to boxing. I, I, was, hooked, I was hooked from there. And that was when I was 20. So it's uh, almost 27 years ago. Oh, it is like you know, it's plenty of experience there for you. <laughs> and I said, and I still try and one night a week. I try. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's, it's it's just hard sometimes, isn't it? Like when you've got so many other stuff going on as well. In your life. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um, I, I haven't. I, I've had I've had plenty of breaks. So I haven't trained for six months, or you know, been injured or whatever. But um, and and you know, raising family. I've got I've got I've got three kids, three daughters. But um, I suppose if it's something that you love doing in your life, and uh, you know, you make it a priority, you find the time. And I've been very lucky to have a wife that supports me with all the Muay Thai stuff I do, not just the training. The training's probably the less time. I only go for two hours once a week. You know, compared to everything else that I do. But I just think it's important that you know, uh, forty seven years of age, I, I keep my body moving somewhat. And still do what I love. I still spar uh, with all our fighters, although um, they're starting. I'm starting to slow down a bit, so they're, they're starting to take it easy on me. But um, I still love getting hit, and I, I still love hitting back. It's good fun. How's your, how's your yeah. back holding up? Uh, I've actually got a sore back right now. Uh, actually, to be honest, um, I've had a sore back for some time, and I've, I've heard it the last three weeks. So yeah. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get it uh, right uh, before next Saturday because I've got uh, you know we've got going to rock up at the venue at seven a.m. and I'll be there at probably four a.m. So it's uh, it's going to be a long day. Mine always yeah. hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a dead nerve in my coccyx, and I, I was told seven years ago I need an operation to get it uh, pulled out. But uh, yeah, I just haven't done it yet. I'm pretty bad about that. Second can wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like outside, like you know, promoting and family life. What, what else do you do? What do you do f in uh, for, for work? Uh, well, I, um, I'm a dealer principal. I run car dealerships in Perth. Uh, I've been doing that for some time. I've been in the car industry uh, quite a long time, which is uh, you know pretty full on job and uh, you know long hours and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know it's it's something that I love doing and keeps me keeps me really busy. And I, I think that professional side of me um, has probably helped me a little bit in the promotion too, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. It's just like you know, like myself, I'm I'm a very um, let's say. I'm a very young promoter myself. <laughs> so it's like, just, yeah. I kind of, I, I didn't really like the, 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 when I first started doing like the romantic idea, go, oh, this would be cool. We make cool fights. But all this sh other shit goes through. I go, man, this is, this is full on. How does that stay in this game? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're learning really fast, man. Our first, our first couple of shows, we, uh, we didn't have a big team and we did a lot of it ourselves, like grind it hard. I mean, the last show, the big one, we had Superbank and Amman Barlow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, we, we were on two basketball courts and the venue gave me a regular old house mop. 
to do the floors. I was expecting, you know, those ones that you kind of push up and down. <laughs> yeah. they, they gave me a, they gave me a house mop and bucket, so uh, I was there till I remember still still mopping with um, with Gab and his and his wife till like five thirty a.m. five a.m. because you know the, the basketball court gets pretty sticky with all that spilt alcohol. It's a pretty it was a pretty long long job to basketball courts with a with a house mop. But we got a we got a much bigger team behind this this show, and uh, you know we, we we've learnt. Um, I, I don't fancy you know mopping until that those hours of the morning again but you know if we have to do it we will but we've got a lot more helpers and i think that's the key now you've got two mops <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> we're actually this this venue and we've got a this venue is amazing uh, um you know they've been pretty hard on us with all the covid stuff because they're they're guided by the university of australia board so it's not particularly their fault but it's been it's been really tough to uh, adhere to all their rules and regs and all the stuff they're putting us through but uh we've got black carpet man so it's a it's a real step up top venue we've got uh the the, the, the whole floor is covered in in black carpet and black beautiful you know um curtains from the floor to the ceiling and it's, yes it's a it's a far more professional look this venue oh, yeah nice. black carpet top yeah yeah so before we get into the show from there because like oh that's gonna take up the, the whole episode this guy <laughs> yeah gonna, yeah there's plenty of talk about on that one um yourself you, you you um you do a bit of fishing you do ju- judging and refing as well yeah so i'm the, I'm the head referee for wa for for muay thai australia wa and uh, i've held that position since 2013. uh i started judging 2001 or 2002 and then um i think i started refereeing about 2007 um and then 2013 dean woodhams who was my trainer if you like my my the previous head 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 official he retired and um i was lucky enough to be asked if i wanted to replace him and i've been doing that role uh, ever since and uh, hopefully i keep doing it for many many years ahead it's like um like you said there like you spent a long time uh judging before you ref was there a certain uh process to uh, where you did that or like you just felt like oh good for a change yeah. now after a while yeah, no, I, I, from day one, I always wanted a referee. There was no doubt I was going to be a ref. And uh, at, the, uh, at the gym, uh, I was a coach of, at the time, under Oliver Olsen with the Olsen Muay Thai Factory. Um, Olsen, uh, Oliver was actually uh, one of the first to do a lot of the gym shows in WA. And um, as far as when I say gym show, I'm talking about, you know, sparring, sparring days, of course. And um, so I started refing those sparring days, even though I was a, you know, I was a judge. But I, that was just my, my intro to doing it. And that really gave me a really good... Um, apprenticeship if you like I must have done I reckon I would have ref at least 40 gym show sparring days fights 40 bouts before I even did my first proper official bout um, but I would have judged easily I mean I judged for I would have judged for uh, probably uh, six years seven years maybe before before I before I ref so uh, I always wanted a referee but I really wanted to get a lot of that that judging out of my belt and uh, I, I wanted to be just 100% all over my judging and before I felt comfortable because, you know, jumping in that ring, man, and, and, and refing, you know, you get, you get a lot of people in the crowd and I'm, I'm quite vocal on this and this is another story. But, you know, I, I will take anyone on that, um, you know, that wants to take pot shots at a decision or, um, or, or uh, what a ref has done or what he hasn't done if they're watching 50 metres away, blind drunk at 11 o'clock at night and yeah. never, done it bef- they've never done it before, you know. So, so you know, it's, it's a big thing to do and um, you, you, you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be cherry rock the door. Um, you know, George Mann, um, you know, he had his, he's been judging on my team for a little while now. And he, he did his first, uh, it was his first day refereeing at uh, Origins. And, you know, he did an amazing job for his first day. I don't think I've even told him that. So uh, well done, George. But um, he, he did an amazing job. And it, but it shows his many, 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 many years of, of experience that he was able just to easily get in there, referee, and, it was, and his refereeing uh, was seamless. Um, so it's all about timing. Roy Wills is probably the best up and coming ref that we've got in WA, if not Australia. He's in my team. Um, I, uh, as soon as the rules uh, went back to allowing current fighters to be able to be officials again, I, I jumped all over him and wanted him back on the team. And, um, you know, he, he's an amazing referee. So yeah. it really does, you know, you don't want to judge for like a year or six months and then just jump straight in there and ref. I, I, you know, but some people can do it and, and, and that's fine. And I've allowed some of those people to do it in my team. But, you know, I am, I'm, a, I'm a pretty hard taskmaster and I will sit back and I'll watch their judges. And I, after every show, I always look over the scores um, of the judges, whether they're new or experienced. And, you know, I know when someone's ready and that's when I, then I allow them to, to, to jump in there and ref. That's okay. a big thing. I'm finding um, a lot of people wanting to feel the, like... Uh, no, 
because you, no, 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 yeah. no, no. So it's um, look uh, certainly, certainly, um, and again, probably uh, me being a bit of a hard taskmaster, I certainly get lots of people inquiring about it. But yep. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fussy on on who I allow. I'll let anybody shadow judge. Anybody that wants to give it a go, I'm, I'm all ears. So, so I'll let them shadow judge and then I'll know why they're shadow judging. Um, and, you know, I would normally, before I let anyone judge, they normally have to shadow judge three or four shows first. Um, and I'll, I'll go through the scores. And if the scores are right, not matching the decisions, I'll make them keep shadow judging. Or there'll come a time where I might say, you know, um, I don't think you'd be, you know, you fit for MTA judging, to, to be honest. Um, um, but you know we 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 you know we like to think that we're a pretty good um, you know um, organisation when it comes to how we train how we and how we coach our up and coming officials. Elias does an amazing job at a national level, and um, you know I try my best at a WA level. And um, you know we only you know we got really good people coming through. Um, you know years and years ago when I took over, um, there was a lot of flack, um, and um, you know I was a new I was the new head official, and for my first couple of years. It was uh, copped a lot of flack, uh, not, not me personally, but just, you know, the team and, and my team. And, um, you know, Facebook can be a pretty volatile place when, 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 when you know, coaches and fighters and f family of those fighters want to vent. Um, so, you know, I had a lot to deal with back there, but I've got to say, Perth, the last four or five years, um, there's hardly been any flack. And, uh, you know, I know the coaches pretty well now. They will always call me or most will message me the next day and we'll have discussions and I'll be honest with them and tell them why uh, their, their fight or lost or, or whatever. And uh, we normally just, you know, thrash it out over a good chat. I think that's the best Facebook. way to bring it really. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, especially like um, just the education of gyms kind of learning. It's like, you know, I'm always down for listening for the, I think I always get better. You know, that is yeah. lucky that we live so close to proximity of like, you know, Elias and, and Trevor Wall already. Um, yeah. It's yeah, uh, yeah, right. for yourself uh, in, uh, in WA, how do you find the education of most gyms when it comes to scoring Muay Thai? Um, oh, that's a hard one. No, it's a touchy this, subject. This, this, is probably, this is probably the contentious one because I actually, um, I, actually, I actually go around gyms will ask me to come and talk to their fighters and I'll invite them and I'll, I'll tell them I'm available to go and do that. Um, and, I, and I will, and I, I did, um, I did one of Perth's top gyms only a month ago. I won't mention who that was, uh, but I went and had a really good chat to their fighters. And, you know, surprise, well, surprise or not surprise, not surprising for me, but really, um, you know, fighters and coaches, not many of them read the, the rules and regs that's on the MTA uh, website. That's the first thing that you should be doing. So I go there with copies of the rules and regs, hand out to all the fighters and then, you know, whether I'm discussing the duties of a referee or, 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 or judges and how we score, I'll go through the rules and regs, read a, a structured program, and, and I'll go through it one by one. And, um, you know, I, I, I know exactly what the reaction is going to be uh, because I've done it enough times now, but I, I still get a kick out of watching fighters see something and then you can see the penny drop in the head. And then I'll say to them, hey, man, you've got to ask questions, you know, because I can see they're thinking over time they don't really want to ask. And I'll always make sure that they're going to ask me and put me on the spot. That's fine. The more questions that fighters and coaches ask, the better. Because there's a lot of perceived um, ideas on what scores and what doesn't. And, you know, when I get up there in front of some of these gyms and say that punches uh, can score equally to any other strike, I get funny looks and I get people trying to tell me, oh, that's not, that's not right. Well, guess what? It is. <laughs> yeah. you just gotta, there's, a, there's a bit more to it, obviously. Of mm -hmm. course, there's a lot more to it. It's got uh, to be an effective strike. So it's got to have power. It's got to be accurate and it can't be a foul. So there's a lot more you know, to it. But, but in, 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 in essence, everything scores equally because it's Muay Thai. It's, 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 uh, uh, you know, it's eight limbs, isn't it? So, that, you know, it's, uh, you know it's, a, it's, it's changed a little bit over the years. It might have been like that a bit in the 90s where you could almost not throw a punch and, you know, win a yeah. fight. But if your striking's hard, man, and effective, and, and if it backs up the other, the other fighter and they, they don't have any receipt or any comeback to your exchange, to, you know, your combo of hands or whatever, then, you know, you, you, you win that little exchange. It's always good to, you know, finish with a kick or something, of course, but um, hands can still be effective. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, That's just, uh, a, just yeah, just a little thing. <laughs> just a little thing. Uh, ever since you started like Muay Thai and like to now, like you get to see like some of the best talent in the country and that, and even internationally. Um, mm. How has your area um, changed in terms of like you know the talent level? Is it like you know, oh. see a big evolution happen? 
man, WA, um, you know, well, firstly, the professionalism of, of WA Muay Thai, and that's, that's the fighters, that's the coaches, that's the officials, you know, the commission, um, you know, like them, like them or loathe them, the commission has definitely added um, a level of uh, accountability and professionalism back, on, back onto us, the officials, but the coaches, the gyms, the fighters, you know, everything. So, um, you know, the, the, the talent, the raw talent coming through, like back in the 90s, you know, we can all name the top four, five or six or seven WA fighters. There was, there's, there were some legends of Australian Muay Thai from WA and, you know, most of them are, are, are legends now in the co coaching field. Um, but, there's, but, you know, those shows back then, was, there was a show every three months. You know, you might get a sh you might get a show every three months in WA. You might get four or five shows in for the year if if, if you're lucky. Um, now it's just it's just it's massive, and you only need to walk into some of the big gyms and look at the facilities. And you know, some of the facilities of these gyms are just amazing. You know, the, 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 some of these athletes I won't say they're spoiled, um, but compared to what we had in the in the mid nineties, it's, it's chalk and cheese. And you know, we, we we didn't we didn't know what strength and conditioning was in the nineties. We didn't. Uh, we didn't do, uh, we didn't believe, we didn't, well, not so much believe, we just didn't combine weights with, uh, with, with Muay Thai or, or anything else. It was just running and, and pad work, man, and, and sparring. That's what we did. And uh, now there's just, there's so many different levels to it and they're just so lucky, these athletes, these fighters and even non-fighters who just want to go and train a couple of times a week. The amenities they have in some of these gyms, you know, it's, it's amazing. Hats off to these coaches that have, that have been able to, you know, provide that to their people. Yeah, it's like uh, the yeah, they're almost like <clears throat> just spoiled in terms of um, just the level, like you know, high level coaching you got over there. Like yeah, New South Wales, we got great coach as well, but like it just yeah, seems yeah. the abundance in like WA, especially. Yeah, in there. yeah. The, 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 obviously, the coaching is probably the biggest difference because back in the nineties, the current coaches that were students and fighters back then. There was, you know, Muay Thai was, was you know, we got to remember Muay Thai was, was relatively new. And when you consider Pon Marti really brought Muay Thai properly to Australia, there was another organisation that obviously did as well. But I suppose Pon was more the authentic Muay Thai. And I think he started in Perth in 1988. So, you know, and, and a lot of WA's uh, coaches today or best fighters came from Pon's gym. But when you consider the amount of coaches back then in gyms, there was probably three or four in the mid-90s. And that's it, where, where all the talent came through. Now there's just a massive abundance and even coaches and, I, and I'm not trying to take anything away from the coaches today in Perth who maybe weren't, uh, didn't have as many fights as, uh, as, you know, as some of these guys in Perth, as some of these coaches, they might've only had 20 fights or something back in the day, but they've, they've uh, adapted and learnt so much um, since that they're still a class gyms as well, you know, and um, you know, the, the talent that they're, they're getting through and, you know, the patience of coaches and their technique in, in teaching, you know, it's chalk and cheese. People today have such a big choice. Like if you want to, um, if you want to join Muay Thai on Monday night, right, and you live to the centre of Perth, and you got a choice, you got you got to choose: do I go to a north river, south of the river? Where do I go to find a really good gym? Man, that's such a hard decision. Such a hard decision to find the right gym. Is there is there a reason why uh, Muay Thai has grown so much in WA in particular? Uh, well, we're talking 25 years, man. You know, 25 years is a long time. I think everything grows in 25 years. Um, certainly, um, you know, certainly uh, the health and fitness industry overall has exploded in Perth. I mean, you know, five, six years ago, who, who, who knew much about F45 or, or, or CrossFit, you know, and, and those industries have exploded. So I think as, um, as all the offshoots, anything to do with health and fitness has, has grown, you know, Muay Thai has just been one of those avenues that has grown with it. Um, and, you know, as the popularity increase and, you know, I, I think Foxtel had a major part of that at birth and, and international kickboxer, you know, I used to love, I've got so many of those magazines in my boxes, in my yeah, garage, it's not funny. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think, cause you know, when you think about it, today's younger generation, uh, you know, they're so lucky if social media, or we all are, but back then we had to wait for international kickboxer to, to see what the, see what all the gossip was and who's fighting who and where, um, and watch, and watch, uh, the fights on, on Foxtel. So certainly um you know as myself as an up-and-coming promoter you got, you got to look at um promotions such as evolution yeah. um and you've got to really thank um nugget and his team and 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 you know foxtel for what they did uh for australian muay thai and you know wa is no exception you know we we you know we love that and I, I think that was part of the explosion of muay thai in in perth especially uh was having all that or that visual, you know, um, and it's not there anymore on Foxtel, is it? But it's but it's everywhere on on your phone or your iPad or what have you. So um, there's still there's far more avenues now to keep up keep up with everything. Yeah. Last night, last night, for instance, you know, 
watching Josh Tonner. You know, you can sit there on your couch and watch it on your phone. It's it's a new world. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, those evolution shows are awesome back in the day. I remember those. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oh yeah. Was that yep. uh, Eugene Eckleboom? Is he a um, WA boy? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. man. I don't he, know what he, 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 he's great. He, he, he's got. Um, I think he's 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 always had his own gym uh, affiliated with another gym. I think he might have just broken away or, or got his own gym called. Uh, I think it's just called Boom. Which was his, uh, you know, Eugene Eckleboom. Um, man, he, um, you know, do you guys know much about his fighting career and his background and all that kind of stuff? You know, he's a multiple-time WMC world champion. He was, he was legit as legit gets, and um, he's definitely one of Australia's best. That he'll go down as one of Australia's best for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. like um, one fight that sticks to mind was him versus Masuda. That was a yeah. hell of a yeah. fight, that one. <laughs> yeah, one, one of my favourite uh, Dutch fighters that actually fought in Perth, I got to meet him, get, get photos with him. Uh, late 90s was a, a Dutch fighter called Rayan Simpson. And um, Eugene fought him at that Jamaica show, hmm. where um, who fought in Jamaica? I think, uh, did Carnage fight that night? Yeah, I think uh, it's just, uh, yeah. And didn't um, was, was Wayne Parr fight Borkow as well? Yes, 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 that's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eugene fought uh, Ryan Simpson that night, and, and Simpson back then was one of the best uh, fighters in the world, and you know, one of the best Dutch fighters. We know how tough they are, and you know, uh, Eugene, I believe he broke his arm with just those kicks, you know, those just hard kicks. And yeah, Eugene was a man back, back in his day. I definitely was. <laughs> with most of the shows that are going around um, in WA at the moment, like, uh, how many of them are like MTA shows? Is, is, there other, is, is MTA like the most prevalent, like, um, I know, sanctioning body there in WA. Yeah, look, yeah, look, M- MTA has been, um, you know, has been, a, a, you know, I'm a little bit biased, but has definitely been, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the number one sanctioning body in in WA for some time. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, you know WBC are um, starting to have a bit of a, uh, an influence on shows, but um, you know, when you think of the shows uh, like like you know Riddler's Epic, for instance. Um, you know, Riddler's been a, a long-time um, supporter of, of MTA, so he's he's Epica always sanctioned uh, with us. And Riddler's also the president of WA, by the way. So, um, so you know, he's a, he puts in so much time into MTA. So we're very lucky to have someone like himself and and Andrew Nelson. Uh, I'm actually, I sit on the board with those two guys, and uh, you know, um, so we're we're you know we're we're biased MTA guys. But you think about the promotions in the past with Chantel's Futures and Domination. And ignition um, and origins, um, you know, um, you know, MTA WA has, has had a pretty, has had a pretty good, uh, you know, has had a lot of great shows under their banner, and we've, we've been very proud. And for me, as a head official, they're the shows that I'm head official for, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a privilege to, to to put the officials team on that night for those shows. Yeah, awesome, man. So let's let's go into now, like, um, getting into promoting. So, like, yeah, how how did, how did you get into that? Um. It's it's something I always wanted to do, but I never really, uh, you know, I never, you know, it's not like I wrote it down as one of my goals and I looked at it every day and lived and breathed it. Um, I was always very interested in it, and I suppose because of my my career and my my professional background, I thought I, I could, you know, maybe do a good show one day. Um, and um, I've um, since uh, Oliver Olsen closed down his gym, which was uh, Olsen Muay Thai Factory. I was there for ten years when that when that closed. I didn't really have a gym to go to. I Oliver had been my only coach my whole life. And um, I, I took a break from Muay Thai, I think, for probably six months, one of those breaks I was talking about. But um, there was a local gym in my area, not too far from home, and I slowly got to know Gab Fuller just from the, the fight shows. And I thought, stuff, I might as well just, you know, three kids, busy lifestyle, I might as well just go to the local gym and see what that's like. And that was Gav. And uh, I've been training there ever since. It's been a good five years. And um, last year, he, um, he, he asked me if I'd be keen. He already did the first Muay Thai Grand Prix where we had Roy, Roy Wills fight Lotus. Um, Lotus was one of our uh, Thai trainers at the gym. I wasn't a part of that show. Uh, Gav had uh, another business partner who was one of his best mates from the UK. But then um, he, that, that guy, Shorty, decided to, um, to leave WA and move to Sydney. And that, uh, that left Gav looking for a partner because I'd been at the gym for five years and he obviously knew my background and... You know, so forth. He asked me, and yeah, I, I jumped at it, man. I didn't even think twice. Yeah, it's 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 such like a like for a first promoting gig. It's a huge show <laughs> to get a part of. Like, the, like where was the, the like for for Gav, I guess, especially like uh, um, how did he link up with like uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix? Because like, if no one knows, it's a worldwide yeah organization, and it puts on great shows. Yeah, look, um, 
So we, ha we have a pretty good synergy between Gav and I because we share, we bring different aspects to the table and we, we, you know, we have different roles, but certainly Gav's contacts, you know, he's from the UK himself. I think he's from Leeds, uh, but his contacts with the UK was obviously, um, uh, he knows the guys behind Muay Thai Grand Prix. And um, that's what got him on board uh, with, with, uh, you know, with, with Australia. So, so that's, that's, you know, that, that obviously helps. Uh, he, he knew those guys and it was just perfect, perfect for him. And, and now for us to take that on board and have the responsibility, I suppose, of, of putting it on in Australia, we're, we're, you know, we're pretty lucky to be part of a, a worldwide um, organisation. In fact, Muay Thai Grand Prix in Europe won best Muay Thai uh, promotion uh, throughout Europe last year, 2019, best Muay Thai. So I think glory is more kickboxing, I suppose. So it sounds like a, you know, it's a pretty big feat, but it's for pure Muay Thai shows, you know, Grand Prix was it, man. They won the big award, which was great. Yeah. On, on your shows from there, do you just like, just take that promoting role or do you have to you know, go and do some officiating on that as well? Or do you just, you just send the team in? Yeah, no, I, I definitely don't. Uh, I don't work as an official on my own, on our own show. That that's, one, I suppose, is a bit of a conflict, but two, just it's just way too hard. There's just, there's, as I'm learning, there's just far too much other stuff going on that I need to be on the ground for, and uh, uh, you know, be uh, be um, you know, be ready to help out. Or you know, people coming to me with stuff that you need to be able to help out with. But I, I enjoy cornering again. It's been a while since I've cornered. Uh, I, I stamped out. One of the first things I did when I took over uh, MTA head official was I stamped out officials being coaches and, and, and cornering fighters on the same night and then coming and judging the next fight. I, I just didn't think that was a good look. And it was too much strain on the rest of the team when one goes missing for two or three bouts and comes back. And so, you know, I really wanted to build a team that stayed together for the whole night. And, um, you know, so, so because of that, because of that own, my own rule that I actually had to ban myself. Uh, so I did it. I, I did it originally um, when I was um, coached with Oliver at Olsen Muay Thai Factory. So, so, um, so I, you know, I, I had to stop that. But working on my own show now, I get to corner with Gav, which is uh, something I still love doing. You know, done it for such a long time, then had a break because of, you know, being an official. So I really cherish that. So I'll always, um, I'll always, you know, be happy to corner on my own show. But um, I do a bit of commentary as well. So I'll, I'll jump on the live stream and I'll commentate with with Kaylee. And Mini T and uh, Daniel Dawson, Adam Bailey. We've got some. We've got some pretty good dudes over here that can that can they can commentate. So uh, I, I love doing all that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. So here's a, just wear many hats. This is a part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, I just think. I mean, I think every promoter does. I mean, for us, you know, we've got uh, we've got three three fighters on the night show. Um, and you know you don't you know you don't really want to have too much more than the three or four. How how Daz does epic? I mean he's just amazing. Him and his team and he'll do epic and have eight or nine fighters on his show. It's just amazing. Um, obviously he's a seasoned uh, warhorse when it comes to promoting and being a, being a coach. So he's got it down packed. But there's no way that you know we could do that. So um, and plus he's got abundance of fighters as well I suppose. And I know epic gives him an opportunity to get um, as many. Uh, of his own fighters on that show as possible. But no, I think uh, three or four bouts for us is enough on our own show. And then we're there to be able to help out and, you know, do whatever else we need to do. Oh man, that sounds so good. <laughs> Compared to our show, like we got like eight of our own guys on there. And I'm just, yeah. I'm just running around, just going, just going, ah, ha, in the back. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're only, uh, you know, Gav's, Gav's gym ha has grown amazingly in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. But still, relatively, uh, I wouldn't say a small gym, but probably a medium-sized gym. Um, I, I haven't really counted how many fighters we've got, but I'd say it's probably only about ten. Um, so, so you know, it's not um, it's not a, a huge team. But when you put it in perspective, you know, Gav's uh, Gav is also a, a professional. He's a he's a full-time engineer at Shell in the in Perth CBD. So he runs the gym at night uh, after working as an engineer all day. So he's got a you know he's got a uh, he's got his plate full with his career plus his gym at night and, and promoting so don't see how he could really um coach properly if his team if, if his fight team was much bigger to give them the the service that they need from a from a head coach yeah it's a stack schedule it's a stack yeah uh, yeah my, myself my schedule as well and gab's just had his first baby so he's, he's experiencing uh fatherhood um so you know he's he, he it's you know it's it's busy man you know uh, gab's wife nick she's kind of the backbone of our promotion. We might be the faces of it, but she's doing so much admin work and, you know, all the stuff behind the scenes with the commission and, you know, just, just you know, head organiser, if you like. So, we're, you know, we're, a bit, we're, we're probably very lucky in that regard. Team effort. Yeah, definitely team effort, yeah. So, like, 
before we get into the car itself from that, so like how, how did this, how did you go running a show like after all this COVID shit? Like, you know, what's like Perth seemed to have a better yeah. schedule and getting back into shows instead of New South Wales, which is nothing. Nothing's yeah. been said, though. <laughs> look, it, it, look, COVID, COVID didn't hit WA as hard as some of the other states, but, but we've got the hardest premier. So it's, it's been a real challenge. And, and Curtin Stadium, uh, where the show is at, which holds 3,000 people, uh, which is why we booked that for Liam Harrison versus Roy Wills. Um, you know, they, that, they're under the, the Australian National University Board. So they've actually been stricter than the premier. And that, that's at their own admission. So we've had to deal with, you know, what the Premier is doing, plus the, 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 the National University Board, which has been tougher than some of the Premier's hard stance. I mean, I think the Premier's stance for um, stadiums is 50% capacity. Well, we're, the, the university are making us run a lot less than that. You know, 3,000 people, are only, we're only there to have 600. Oof. So, yeah, when you consider last year, we had, uh, we had 1,100 at our November show in a smaller venue we've got a much bigger venue with only 600 people. So it's, you know, it's a big hit for us. Um, and, you know, it's not all about uh, financially, I suppose, but, you know, we, we do need to at least break even to keep doing shows. So this has been really tough on us. But, you know, we, uh, we really want to step up our production. And, um, you know, we're never going to be, you know, uh, you know, we're never going to be like you know, UFC or 1FC or something like that. But we want, we want it visually to be as good a, a, a view as possible for the live audience, uh, but also for the, for the viewer on the, on the live stream. So, you know, it's a bit unfortunate that this show, there's probably going to be a lot of emptiness uh, in the background uh, because with the stadium seats, uh, every second row is, has to be kept empty for this show and there has to be an empty seat between each person. So we've certainly got, our challenges to make sure that that is uh, carried out on the night. Um, we will be posting about that during the week about some of the stuff that, that we need the crowd to be able to help us with. We don't want uh, we don't want the venue to not let us back there. So we've got to we've got to deal by their rules and regs. But um, you know uh, the way the way we're looking at this, and we had this chat the other day. You know if if we can pull off uh, two shows on the one day in the middle of COVID with all the rules and regulation they put on us, you know, moving forward, that puts us in good stead to do a show anytime, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And fair play to you guys for just really trucking on. Like I know it's probably crossed your mind a lot of time. It's like, but let's just put on a show when everything's back to normal. So you don't have to kind of. Exactly. You know, yeah. But we, we nearly, we nearly pulled it, man. We, we were going to pull the show. Yeah. Yep. But, but yep. You yep. mentioned the two, the two shows. Um, touch, touch on what you've done there um, to kind of accommodate the, the crowd issue with your, your two show situation. Yeah. Well, look, the timing was probably on our side because there's been a lack of, uh, shows for the year so we knew there was a huge uh it's, a, it's an abundance of amateur fighters wanting to you know wanting to get out of pads so they want to get as many fights up their sleeve as possible and of course they've been starved for the year so we we thought well let, let's do a day show man Let, let's do an amateur show let's put on 14 bouts uh during the day and um and um you know make it a make it uh make it an amateur and a pro show on the one day which is which is what we're doing so that's that was that only came on probably, you know, six weeks ago. You know, we've done all that in the last six. We're, 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 we're a real six weeks behind schedule compared to last year because uh, the venue, uh, we had to cancel the May show, which was Liam Harrison versus Roy. And then, um, you know, the venue gave us some pretty short notice. So they couldn't really give us to, uh, They couldn't give us warning when they'd reopened. It all depended on so many things. And all of a sudden the venue were like, yeah, we can, we, we can let you do it. So, you know, we had to drop everything and put the show together. So, um, you know, we're, we're pretty excited. We've got, um, we've got some new gyms. We've got some, uh, some beginner gyms, beginner fighters, padded fights. We've got a, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a, a good, a really good main event. Um, but you know, even as an official, as a ref, you know, I, I, I still love all the amateur road two days. You know, some of my, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've refereed, um, you know, Yodson Clyde, like I said, and, and, yeah. um, the, the fight I cherish the most probably out of all my refereeing fights would be, um, the WMC world title, Mini T Williams versus a tie on domination in 2015. That's probably, you know, that means more to me being a WMC world title. But my point being is, um, you know, I get a kick out of watching uh, two two people fighting um, their first fight in full full pads. Everything. It's you know, it's because I could be I could be one day refereeing them for a world title in in you know yeah. ten years time or, or six years time. So I get a kick out of that. A lot of Perth's best fighters today. I've ref some of their first fights in pads and. You know when they first begun, and now they're you know their main events on some of the big shows. So I, I certainly get a kick out of that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's cool as well. You know, like especially a state like WA where there's such an abundance of elite level talent, 
with the start of the year having nothing, I guess it can be easy to just put on a show with the big names. But like what you're doing here with allowing for the Road 2 show as well, you keep things moving at that sort of lower level. So you're setting yourself up well for, for yeah. when the shows are busier again to keep these new guys getting in there and getting some experience. So yeah, I think like for, for the situation especially, you've done a great job of kind of getting a mix of everything. Get the Thanks. In, yeah. Get the elite yeah. Well, well um, it's certainly our plan. It's our. It's our. It's, our, it's going to be our promotional uh, module moving forward. Next year, we've got four shows booked, and two of them are row twos. Uh, we 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 may not. We probably won't need to do it all on the one day again, depending on COVID. But we we we're hoping we can do four shows, and that'll be two row twos. And um, depending on the borders, we've got some. You know, we've got some really legit, massive bouts lined up, like huge and i think for the fans when they hear some of the names that we're who we're talking to at the moment um i think it's you know it's gonna be pretty cool so we can and, and obviously liam harrison's going to be the, the main one um but we've got some other massive massive bouts so you know we we want to bring, bring them on our pro shows as well and um as soon as the as soon as our premier opens the borders we're, we're on we will go we'll go to work and get those get those fights signed with proper dates any hints and, for, us um, for who's coming over um Hugh oh, O'Donnell. <laughs> what, what was that, sorry? What was that, sorry? Hugh O'Donnell. Look, uh, <laughs> uh, look uh, we, we, we've got some big uh, Australian names and some, some massive names uh, out of Thailand. And mm. uh, obviously Liam. And, uh, you know, we'd like to bring Aman back. Uh, yeah, Aman, Aman Barlow. And, uh, you know, we, had, we also had Andy Housen booked on that same night as Liam. We hadn't had a chance to announce that, um, but we had him booked. So, um, you know, he's, he's obviously now fighting on one, so there's, there might be a few, a few challenges there. Um, but, um, yeah, we've got, some, we've got some 1FC signed guys that are still on our show, so we think we can hopefully, um, you know, with those people at least, get them on the show. But we've got some, you know, some big A, you know, some A-grade ties that, um, that uh, have committed to us um, for, for some big fights and, uh, you know, even maybe a, a WBC world title, so that'd be pretty cool as well. Nice. That would be, yeah. That's excellent. yeah. Mm-hmm. So let, let's actually get into the card now. So let's like uh, get into the, all the great stuff that's happening here. So like, yeah, um, sure. Hugh's got the card. Yeah, here. I've got the card in front of me. Like, I'm super excited for this. And and what I reckon I'll do here is just add a sort of the the, the main fights on on the main card. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll name the fight. Um, give us your thoughts on it. Things to watch for. Um, kind of even the the sort of what was going into the matchmaking process. Yeah, just, just really interested to hear. So yep. thought, we'll just get sure. stuck right in. So um, uh, we'll, we'll start with the WBC state title fight. Um, Shannon Peak from Bailey uh, versus Megan Burbick from Riddler. So I've seen Megan fight a few times. I've been really impressed with her. I like her style. Um, yep. Shannon, I've seen a little bit less of. Um, so she, She's you know, tough, man. Yep. She's tough. Yeah. She's very tough, then you know, um, you know Adam Bailey. He doesn't muck around with his with his gym. He's got three Muay Thai gyms around Perth. He's got he's the head coach, obviously, and he's got his he's got his ties uh, Thai head coaches out of each gym, and he he puts his uh, he puts his fighters uh, through um, you know through really hard camps. You only had to look at the condition of uh, Duke at the weigh-in last year for his fight against Superbank. You know, you yeah. could just see how shredded and how ripped he was. That he he put in the work, man. And um, yeah, I, I know. Um, I know. You know, for this fight, they've all been training very hard. So she'll definitely come to fight. Um, Megan's a, a, is a, is a, is a very clean technical fighter. There's no yeah. doubt. Um, but um, yeah, but but Peak, she, um, she she she's 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 tough and she's skillful. So um, don't ask me to give a tip because I don't know who's going to win that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. This is another one I, I'm looking forward to a lot. A rematch, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Tyler Hardcastle from Riddlers, a, a, a one championship fighter versus Damon Nelson from Lana Muay Thai. Um, thoughts on this yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, mate. Um, you know Andrew Nelson uh, from Lana. He, he's, um, I mean, he's not. Uh, uh, be careful how I say this. I don't mean this disrespectfully. In WA, everyone knows how good his gym is. He's only a small gym. He's a very, very technical gym. The rest of Australia may not know too much about Lana Muay Thai. But, um, you know, he is, um, you know, Andrew's a very technical coach and, you know, he wins, they, that, that team win a hell of a lot more than what they lose. And, you know, Damon Nelson, I really rate. I rate him as one of Australia's best uh, prospects. He's only in his early 20s or maybe I think he's just turned 21. So still, still a young man. Um, look, he's after redemption, isn't he? And as a promoter, we love that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the rematch. Tyler, I actually refereed that, their, their previous fight, Tyler versus Damon on Epic. 
And, um, you know, that was going to be, that fight was going to be the battle of the head kicks because Damien's yeah. got a hell of a, everyone, everyone talks about Tyler's head kick. Well, you know, Damien's got a hell of a head kick on him as well. And, um, you know, I always, I was ready for that as a ref, you know, it's good to know your fighter sometimes. And I, and I was ready for someone to throw a head kick. I just knew one was going to go down and, uh, it was Tyler that pulled it off and yeah, he, he, he knocked, uh, he knocked Damien out and, uh, Tyler got the W, so yeah, Damon uh, Damon Damon's coming coming back, and obviously he wants he wants the win. So it's just a just a cracking matchup, yeah, really really good matchup. And what weights this one at? I, I thought Damon had been fighting a bit heavier than Tyler. Um, yeah, I think Damon Damon's taken a few hard fights, man, at like seventy kilos. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's been fighting at seventy, and and you know, he really is a sixty seven kilo fighter, okay. and um, you know he's come back to sixty seven kilos. To fight Tyler, yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. That, that's their weight. Interesting time for Tyler as well. Obviously, he had those couple of tough starts in one championship and had a bit of a bounce back fight on Muay Thai Grand Prix um, against Bank. Yep, against Bank. Yep. But even that one was it was kind of a funny one. Um, just a bit of an unfortunate injury, kind of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was an it was an injury to bank, but you know, don't underestimate uh, the, the the quality of the fighters that one FC chucked Tyler in against. Oh yeah, and and, and also uh, it, you know it wasn't full Muay Thai. You know, it, uh, you know he's had some tough fights. He had a couple of tough fights in China, um, um, and you know it was it was probably in, in favour of the, the Chinese style more than what Tyler's you know full Thai rule style is. So, you know, I don't think Tyler's had a. I don't think uh, you know that fight against Bank was his. First proper his style fight, being a full tie rules fight in some yeah. time. So um, you know, I hope that when uh, I hope to see Tyler fight on one FC, you know, with what he does best at, at full tie rules, I think yeah, I think will be, yeah, I think that will give you a, a pretty good um, you know realization of, of how good Tyler is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And what a classic stylist Tyler is, right? Like just that really that left whip kick, man. Yeah. Kick um, from um, hell. Vividly strong left kick. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm a huge Tyler fan. Like, I really think he's... I thought... I will never forget watching Tyler fight Summer Patch. Like, just... Yeah. From home rebellion. Off. Yeah, on Rebellion. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, that's yeah. one of those ones where you're just watching Tyler just prove what everyone says about him. Like, and you it was, know... It was a defining moment, wasn't it, yeah. for his career? Yeah. I love a fight like that because I think he was a bit written off too. You know, people kind of because I don't think he was the first pick for the fight. I think they they mm. kind of wanted to do maybe um, Lloyd. Um, yeah, and he wasn't the, he wasn't the favourite by any stretch. Yeah. So yeah, just absolutely got in there. And yeah, that's where you just got to watch that fight to to just see Tyler's class. Um, yeah, really looking forward to this. And and like I said, I love I love a redemption story too. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Everything about it, just two guys coming off. Everyone's coming off a layoff, but um. Just uh, yeah. guys like that, the styles of it, uh, awesome match. Yeah, I'll be making sure that I'm uh, somehow I'm, I'm I pull myself away from people and I'm ringside to, to be watching that fight for sure. Yeah, yeah. and what a yeah. crazy fight to be in the middle of the card. Like, this is a ridiculous card. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yep. We've got another WBC state title. This is this is a good one as well. Um, Leo Newman from the pit, who I've been really impressed with. Yeah, um, Tim Mitchell from Legends. Uh, give us a run through of, of what your thoughts on this one. What's this match like? Yeah, um, T- Tim Mitchell was a, a former teammate of mine. We 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 uh, trained together at Olsen Muay Thai Factory before it closed, and then he moved uh, to join Daniel Dawson and, and Gaz at Legends. Um, and Tim's the current champion, mate. And Tim's no joke. You know, he's highly skillful. You only need to watch his last fight on our show, where I think it might have been the last two rounds. He just turned it on, and he just he put the pressure on. He's got the moves. He had a couple of spinning elbows there, and you know he he. Because he's very uh, technical uh, and very skillful, uh, I, I, this is not me talking because I know Tim very well, but I think people underestimate how tough he actually is, yeah. purely because, he, because of how skillful he is. When, when, he, when someone puts the pressure on Tim, um, a lot of fighters might go in their shell for a little bit just to absorb it. But a lot of fighters will just absorb, absorb, wait, wait, wait for their turn, then come back. You put the pressure on Tim, he doesn't like, he'll just come straight back. He doesn't wait. He'll yeah. just go, okay, now I'm, he'll just go like, okay, I need to lift it to the next level. That's your level. I need to go, to, I need to go to the next level. He won't, he won't guard up. He won't, he won't hop in the corner and stand and let you tee off on him. He just tees off in between back. So you've just got these two guys just teeing off at each other. You know, he'll just go to war and um, he, he wins those, he, he wins those hard battles. So I'm not sure if that would be Blair and Leo's yeah. game plan game plan with Tim because normally it doesn't work against him. 
Um, Leo, man, Leo's tough. I think he's coming off a loss. He lost early this year on futures to Joe McCoy. Um, Joe McCoy's a you know he's, he's a very tough boy. I, I think that was his last fight. I stand corrected. I could be wrong there, um, but there, Leo's fought the best in that division. You know, he he, the, you know, typical Blair. They don't, and as a promoter, I'm learning this as well. Blair doesn't say no to any fights. It doesn't matter, you know, how many fighters, how many fights his his boys had. He'll 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 take on anyone. So look, this is a stylistically, this is a really close matchup. Um, Leo's very strong. If you if you look at his body type, he's got a more of a a stronger body type than Tim. Tim's probably, I, I'd say Tim's probably a bit taller. But Leo's legs, man, he's, he's got thickness between his hips and he's just got those big legs. So when, when Leo kicks, you know, he kicks hard. So, yeah, again, uh, the challenger, Leo, uh, up against the champ, it's, it's yeah, I, I, don't think, um, I don't think Tim would be a huge favourite by any stretch just because he's a champ. I think this, this fight's going to be a, a barn burner. Yeah, I think across the board, all the fights here, I don't, I don't think there's many you could pick. Um... A big favourite in down this card, or all kind of coins. So close, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what that's what we love, man. Like we did that last year, and um, you know we, we we love that aspect of our of all our bouts. Uh, and you look at Duke versus uh, Superbank, and you know everyone who's followed Superbank for many years knows that how 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 good he is, and or or more to the point, how good he used to be. So um, I think Duke. Was, I think Duke was yeah one of the legends, hundred yeah. percent. And I think Duke was was underestimated. And we love that about our bouts. And, and Duke was the underdog and, and he won, you know. I, I don't like seeing fights, uh, seeing shows, and I won't name them, but you see a lot of shows where the, there's just mismatches for their hometown heroes to be the champs. And it's, it's not good viewing. It's not good for the promotion, I don't believe. And I'd much rather have a promoter. I'd rather look at this fight and go, man, I've got no idea who's going to win this. Yeah. Mm. And that's, that's, really that's what we pride ourselves on. Yeah. It's always kind um, of our sports thing compared to like boxing. is like no one gets... No one gets the the that slow build up. It's just like you got two two flip a flip a coin. That's what we're about, you know. And I and you know I'll give all that credit to my partner Gav. He he's our matchmaker. Yeah. I, I think for the night show I might have matched only two of those bouts. He's 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 literally matched the rest of and all the daytime bouts as well. So Gav's a very good. Uh, matchmaker, he 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 knows all the fighters in Perth, and you know he he loves that aspect of it. And that's getting back to what I said earlier: how we both have our roles, yeah. and certainly certainly the matchmaking is, is Gav's role because he because he does a bloody good job of it. Yeah, yeah, matchmaking's an art, right? Like it's just hundred percent. Don't realize it's not just yeah. finding two guys that submitted their names at the same weight and just making a draw. It's like it's a different, oh, great show. Gab- and if Gab like, looks at their Gab looks at their record. He looks at their style. He looks at their last. You know, it's not just that. He look at their, their their current form. You know, yeah. the last couple of fights, and you know he'll look at and say, well, you know, he, he's got a good eye to say, well, that guy's had much less fights, but his last three fights has been unbelievable. And the other guy who's got a much better record might have dropped off a bit. Now's the time for these two to meet. You know, you catch him a year earlier or a year later, it might not be the right timing. But he, Gab just has has this knack to get these you know these guys together at that right moment. So um, that's what that's what gives us the good bouts, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of good bouts, this next one I think maybe like I I was really interested when I saw this one announced. I think maybe a sleeper for one of the top fights of the night because it, it was one of those fights where I saw this one announced and I was kind of like, oh, okay, like it was just a bit of like a a surprise. Um, Lucas Sayer versus Marco Tentori. <laughs> yeah. There's, good the fight. Yep. there's like generations between yeah, that, but it's yeah. like it's it's a good one. Like, you know, the old, uh, like you know, the old bull there, yeah. Mike Cantori versus the young up and comer, Luke Sayer. There's a great narrative to that. Yeah. Oh man, I, I could I could go on about this bout for a long time because you know I've got I've got an affiliation with uh, you know with Lucas's coach Carl. He was a teammate of mine at Olsen Muay Thai Factory, and Carl's gone on to do amazing things with with uh, Frankie at, at Diesels and become an integral part of that team and. You know, I've I've refed and judged Lucas since he started, man. So this is this is a highlight for me. And then and then you talk Marco, and um, you know, like I said, I, five years ago I I refed Marco versus Yod Yod Sinclair, and um, that was a great bout. I've seen I've refed Marco many times. In fact, I've I've said this quite often. And I'll say it again. Um, Marco is the hardest any fight that Marco's in as a referee. He's the hardest bouts to ref, and the reason being is he's not pure Muay Thai. He doesn't stand there and bang. He moves like no one else. There's no one in Australia that 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 burns energy and moves in and out like Marco does. 
So, um, you know, um, he, he's, he's on, Mark is on his bike. And as a referee, you've got to be on your bike to get out of his way because he comes at you at complete, not just the fight of the ref. He comes at you at all these different angles. He'll come in and he'll hit you two or three times and then he's gone. You know, and at a, as a ref, you've got to predict where he's going to go because you don't want to be in that spot because the, the worst thing as a ref is a fight if you bump into a fighter. It's, there's two bad things. There's the, two of the worst things that happen to a referee. One is a fighter bumps into you or you bump into them or the doctor blows the horn uh, because you weren't, uh, you know, you weren't looking after the fighters uh, as well as you should have. So, you know, that, that, and with Marco, that's, that's tough. So, look, Marco's a veteran. I think he's 35 years of age. He's not a, you know, his background's not, not, all Muay Thai, right? Obviously, he's learnt Muay Thai, but he has yeah. a kung fu back. He has a kung yeah. fu background. Man, right now he's got the best ring entrance in Australia. He, uh, have you have you seen him on Epic when he comes out with the uh, the dancing the Chinese line? Yeah, uh, yeah, he comes out with that, and it, it's it's an amazing spectacle. So you know, I love I love the fact that he you know obviously I'm biased and I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm Muay Thai through and through, but I love the fact that Marco brings something different. Yeah. To, any of the show, to any of the shows, not just mine. He brings a different fighting style. He, he brings, uh, you know, he, he comes in with the with the, the dancing line and the kung fu flags in his corner, and he's got his he's got uh, Alan Pond as his coach, but he's got a, a kung fu coach in there with him as well. So it's just it's something different. It's a treat. It's a good spectacle, and you know, Marco's tough. I mean, I, I don't, I can't remember Marco ever being knocked out. Um, it's like you know, sure. different unorthodox, but like he. Bring it. He brings yeah. it. So, he brings it. Yeah. He, 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 and, you know, let's not forget, Marco is hopping the ring against Australia's best in, yeah. in, Mu in Muay Thai, coming from a different uh, background of martial arts. And, you know, he, you, you guys know he was a WMC Australian champion for some years, right? Hmm. Yeah. So, so you know, um, kung fu background, and he's beating some of the best Muay Thai fighters in his division. So hats off to him, you know? Yeah, man, he gave Yodson a good go. Like, sort of scored a little flash knockdown in that fight. Like, Yep. Oh, you remember it? Yeah, good on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Yod's look, I, hard it's, it's it certainly took Yod a couple of rounds to to work Marco out. Yeah, and, and that's that's Marco's style. Uh, look, I haven't watched that fight for a long time, but Marco may have won the first couple of rounds off memory. Um, I think once Yod got going in the third round, I think uh, you know he probably won third, fourth, fifth round yeah. pretty pretty easy to be fair. Uh, but it took it did take Yod some time, and yet you know you, you know Yod's probably not at his peak right now, is he? On one back then he was. We're talking five years ago. Yeah. Ago. yeah. Mar Marco fought uh, uh, um, fought him in 2015. So you know Yod was at the top of his game, and you know yes, there, there was actually um, there was a knockdown because how could I forget that one? Because there was a bit of flack over uh, over me for not giving <laughs> Yod an eight count. Um, but anyone who's anyone that knows, you know that was a flash knockdown. He, he, oh yeah, absolutely. Yod, Yod was up so quick it wasn't funny, and um, he, you know I've got the best view in the house. His eyes weren't blurry. He was straight. Yeah, his guard was up, and so that's you just jump in there. And it's box. There's no, there's no eight count for that. Yeah, yeah, no disagreements there. But still, for on Marco's side, still was having success and still a feat yeah. to get. Well, up. it was. I think it was a little sneaky elbow that actually, that actually got Yod. Yeah, uh, a lot of, a lot of. There was a lot of social media talk saying that the referee missed, missed the actual elbow. It's like, no, I didn't miss it. I saw it. I, I knew what got what put him down. But, but it was, but it was still a flash. You know, if he'd got up and wobbled a bit, or if he'd taken a little bit of time to get up, then fine. That, that's an eight count all day long. But he didn't, you know, he was, he was a professional. He knew what he had to do yeah, to absolutely. avoid it. Mm. Yeah. And so turning to the other side of the ring in that fight, um, Lucas, Lucas. I, yeah. I, I'm quite impressed by, um, I first saw, he fought my friend, um, Daniel Marshall on a show over here. That was when I first saw him fight. And, and quite interesting because I think, you know, when I first saw him was quite, quite a thin sort of welterweight type fighter. And the last couple of years has really filled his frame and, and become strong. Yeah. Quite a, a, a commanding sort of middleweight in the ring. I think the size is good for him and it's a stylistic clash, right? Cause he does have a very classic clinch based sort of tire style. So do you think it's kind of a matter of all the movement of, of Marco and, and uh, Lucas sort of trying to shut him down and, and, and yep. grab a hold of him? It, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, such a cliche, but it's, it's, it's a style versus style as you can get when it comes to a, yeah. to, to a bout. So, and you know, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not Lucas's coach, but I, I certainly wouldn't be chasing Marco. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you're going to chase him in the ring, good luck. You're not going to catch him. So um, whatever they decide to do, you know, they're going to have to make sure they're not chasing him because Marco's the, a technician at keeping his distance, racking up the points. You know, Marco probably hasn't got a huge knockout ratio. He probably doesn't knock a lot of people out, but he's, He's he's a he's a he's a experienced veteran that knows how to win a fight on points, and he's obviously coming from a different background. He studied that very well and knows what he yeah. needs to do, and that's hats off to Pondy as well, his coach. So so you know he knows what to do to win a fight that goes a distance, 
and um, Lucas is going to have to be aware of that. And, um, you know, you could see some of the, uh, the clinching that he did with Yod. I mean, everyone expected Yod just to, just to strangle him in the clinch, but Marco held his own there for a little bit, was able to get out of the clinch and was able to clinch a little bit back with Yod. So, you know, he's fought Yod, man. So now he's got, uh, uh, now he's got one of WA, if not Australia's, you know, best prospects at 72 and a half kilos in Lucas. And you're right, Lucas is a technician at the Muay Thai style. And yep. that's no surprise, um, being coached by Frankie and by Carl Puglia. So, yeah, it, but, but he's tough, you know. <laughs> he's got the style, he's got the heart. I mean, I've seen him in some absolute wars yeah. in Perth. And like Last I said, I've... No war, right? Yeah, 100%. So, um, yeah, so I, that, that is actually such a, a, a sleeper. Um, but I will, I will let you in on something. Uh, are you guys aware who Marco was originally matched with for my show? For that for okay. Muay Thai Grand Prix, he was matched with uh, Milad. Okay. Milad's come. Milad's come. Yeah. Milad's come. Milad's, Milad's, Milad's the man. Um, he hasn't fought Muay Thai in I'd, I'd say three and a half years. So it was Milad's comeback fight. Um, but you know, Milad's uh, 21 years of age. He was nearly 70 fights. He's now 24. He's had a couple of boxing fights. Destroyed everyone in boxing um, with liver shots. You know, just 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 a great hand technician, but. You know, I, I know Malad quite well. I talk to him often and, and um, you know, he's hungry for Muay Thai. He's probably got a limited window left, maybe three or four years, and then he's going to pursue a boxing career. So, which, which you know, there's no doubt he's got a huge boxing career ahead of him. Um, but he's got some unfinished business in Muay Thai and, and one of them is to regain some of the belts that he had. And um, he's, you know, his first fight back uh, is, uh, is hoping, uh, you know, we, we tried to put it on in May on the, on the, on the Liam show, but... Um, at this stage, we're trying to match him for our next show, which will be the main event for our row two. Hopefully, it will be Milad versus Marco, but um, you know that's not confirmed yet. But that, that's what we're working on. Maybe, maybe Lucas comes in and steals that spot, right? <laughs> like, well, yeah. We if 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 if, if, um, if Lucas wins convincingly, then yeah. you know we'll, we'll we'll have to wait and see. But you know, we we did promise Alan Pond and Marco that fight, so um, I, I, I prefer to you know stick to what. Uh, you know, it's not their fault. It's not their fault that fight didn't happen because of COVID. Yeah. So, it, you know, if they want that fight and if everyone agrees, then you know, would would still probably put, would want to put that fight on. Yeah. Yeah, but either way, like I think with a win here, Lucas definitely cracks that upper echelon. And then so even that sort of um, Marco versus Lad fight happens, and then maybe mm. Luke will go. I think it, it proves his place. Like he could definitely go on to fight a guy like Malad. Yeah, even if, even if Lucas loses a close one to Marco, yeah. um, mm. you know, uh, you know, Marco's beaten plenty of people great champions easily so even if he loses a, a you know in a, in a one thing that lucas will bring is there'll be an all-out war i can guarantee you that so if and you don't often see marco in all-out wars if you if you know what i mean by that marco is very like i said he's very smart at racking up the points and moving around uh, uh, this will be a different fight for marco i reckon this will be a war lucas will bring it to him so you know if lucas was to beat marco or, or put in a really good fight in a, in a, in a close close decision win or loss either way i think it's it's huge for lucas yeah yeah, could could put that that that, that middleweight division on notice a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, well, look look at the the weight category. Look at how many great fighters are out that way yeah. in WA. You know, you're talking George Mann, Chris Watt, Marco, um, Malad, Lucas. Uh, there's some some other guys coming through. Michael Herbs from the pit. You know, he's only an 18, 19 year old boy. He's going to yeah. be anything. You got Riley from Riddlers. I mean, yeah, there's, some, there, there's some hardcore. Uh, there's some hardcore you know, fighters at 72 and a half, which normally is not a stacked division, is it? Because it's a bit bigger than your 63 and a half or 60, 67 kilo fighters. But 72 and a half in WA, uh, they're probably, I don't know, are they the best 72 and a half kilo fighters in Australia? They probably are. Definitely, definitely right up there. And speaking yeah. of, we'll move on to the next fight, right? Which I also believe is at 72 and a half. Chris Kilowatt versus um, uh, the George. skyscraper, George Man. <laughs> um, un, 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 unbelievable bout, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, it's really at the point now where George can't really get fights in WA. Yeah. Um, he, he's he's got, um, you know, he's got an amazing fight coming up on domination against Stefan Lottering. That's 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 that's, that's a cracker. Stefan's a current WBC Australian champion, so that's going to be a great fight. But you know, he's got to get past Chris Watt first. And um, again, you couldn't get two different styles. Mm. You know, Chris Watt. You know, don't, don't and you know, don't take that away from Chris. He's definitely a Muay Thai technician, but he's got hands. He's got yeah. bombs. So Chris, Chris is Muay Thai, but he's got big hands, big, big hands. So, you know, um, you know uh, George, surprisingly, if you know George, we all know he's, he's got a very good chin. When you look at him, you think, well, has he got a chin? 
but you only have to see that fight uh, against Smokey Joe, Smoking Joe, yeah. where he had where he had the hematitis come out. You know, he, you know, George copped those blows and fought hard all the way to the end. So we know George has got a chin. Um, you know, Chris Watt definitely has to be very, very wary. You know, everyone talks about the teeth of George's teeps. And, you know, his teeps are very good and very defensive and very good for keeping fighters away. Really long. But it's, but it's that fake knee and then the step up left knee that yeah. he just digs into the body. And, uh, you know, Chris Watt's going to have to keep out of, out of the way from that. And if Chris can keep away from those knees and um, land some hands, this, this fight is anyone's. Um, is George the favourite for that fight? I, I'd say that's fair. That would be a fair comment to say that George would be the favourite. But, um, you know, I, I know Daniel Dawson and Gaz very well at Legends. And, um, you know, Good there's fight. no way... That, yeah, there's no way Chris White's going to fight the same way other people have against George and lost. That, you know, what, what's the point? So I'm, I, I know they'll have some game plan up their sleeve. Um, you know, this fight's going to be more about strategy than just brawn, if that makes any sense. There's going to be a lot of strategy to this fight that, that Chris Watt's going to have to stick to. And, and George Mandel, we know what he's going to bring. He'll have to stick to his game plan. And will Chris's game plan be enough to upset that or not for George to continue with it? Or will George have to mix it up a bit? Yeah, and that's the thing about fighting George, right? You have to have a plan. Like, you've really got to get, like, you can't just go in there, like, let's see what happens. Like, that's a, a really... Yeah. Tall order. Um, excuse me. <laughs> pun, pun. Yeah. Yeah. Sad trombone. Where is it? Yeah. And, 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 and you don't, you don't realise how big George is. Have any of you guys actually stood next to me? No, I haven't. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm six foot one, and he just towers me. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's, he's, you know. He, but also, he, um, is he six three and a half or something? Six, maybe even six four. I don't know. I think he's up there somewhere. Four, I've seen on some on six four. Thing. Yeah, but, that's what I'm happy to see him like at these bigger weights now as well. Because yeah. like he was below that, I go, how the hell does he make that weight? Like, <laughs> like this one's yeah. now. I think it's good for him, make yeah, him even bigger. Him. Yeah, good for him. He, 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 he's a professional man, you know. I'm pretty sure. I don't think Stefan's fighting. Uh, I'm pretty sure that fight's 76 kilos. I know, that's what um, I. Think, yeah. Yeah. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure George is. You know, and and in hats off to Ritter and George because, as much as that's the fight that everyone wants to see. You know that's a that's a that's another weight to be. That's a lot of uh, you know he's coming up quite a bit to take that fight. Yeah. So you know seventy two and a half to seventy six. That's a big jump up, and um, you know hats off for him for, for taking it. Um, you know him and Chris Watt, him and Stefan. You know Australian fight fans, you got uh, two cracking fights to see. Uh, George Mann a part of both coming up. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's like remember when George was fighting like not even that long ago. Remember when you fought like Alexi Petrulius. Like yeah, that yeah, been yeah, a hellacious weight cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't. He was younger then too. I mean, was, George. Okay. George is. I mean, George technically is still a prospect, isn't he? Because of his age. Yeah. We for, we forget that. I think he's. Just, I mean, is he twenty one? I mean, something I like that. Twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's he's still a very young man. So yeah, the Lexi fight and the Tum winner fight. I refereed that, and Tum was you know very short. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah. you know, but but you know, Tum Tum was a very good. Uh, you know, tie fighter oh, yeah. and George, George knew at a young age, probably talking two years ago, that wasn't epic. So George would have been like 19 and he just fought that fight perfectly. What you expect yeah. a taller person to do to use his weapon, to use his reach. Um, and he know the thing with George, you can teach tall people how to use their reach. It's a, it's different to actually see them do it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as perfectly as George does. Yeah. We've talked about this about George before. It's like, it's all well and good to say he's, tall and whatever but it's not just how tall he is and how big his frame is it's how he knows the science of being a tall fighter and a yep. lot of tall fighters don't like he's really like it, it's he's a class technician he's he's yep. a world beater i can't think of any tall person in the game that uses their advantage as well as george does yeah yeah he's a yep. smart fighter he's a smart yep. fighter he's yep. smart yep. Yep. But that brings up, up to the main event this is an interesting fight um we got yeah. one of WA's favourite ever and one of Australia's favourite ever. Um, really a world-class fighter in the Rebel Roy Wills from the pit. Yep. Um, and taking on an opponent who's, you'd say, taking a pretty big step up here, um, Max McVicker. Yep. yep. Uh, Look, yeah. Let's run through it. Yeah, Max is definitely taking a step up, but for a lot of West Australians, um, you know, on, for... for when I say outside, it's probably people who don't know Max. This probably looks like Roy is definitely going to be the favourite, and, and, and perhaps he is. 
But for a lot of Perth people, everyone knows, everyone's talked about Max for five or six years. He's, he's only an 18 year old kid. We're, you know, we're talking about a junior who was, who was schooling adults in Thailand at, at 15 years of age. Yeah. So Max is not, he's not, he's not a normal 18 year old kid. Let, let's be very, very clear on that. And, you know, Gav and I wouldn't put this on. I mean, we've got a lot to lose if this main event was a whitewash. Yeah, you no know? doubt. So, so, so there's, there's just no way we'd put this on if, if we didn't, um, if we didn't have, you know, a bit more knowledge in, in, in this, in this, uh, in this bout. And, um, you know, I know Roy very well. He's, he's one of my officials on my team and he's, I've known him for such a long time now and he's a great young man and, and probably, you know, one of the best well-spoken fighters going around. And, um, you know, Max is an up and coming. And, and if you, if you listen to Roy's interview on uh, Muay Thai interviews, yeah. you know, if you listen to Roy's interview on Muay Thai interviews the other day, you know, Roy made a very good point and, you know, hats off to Roy. He talked about, when he, he and Toby were up and comers and um, they were given big fights by Australian champions at the time, by yeah. well-known, they were given that opportunity. He's experienced that opportunity that Max is now experiencing now. So he says it's, it's, his, it's his pleasure, if you like, to give back to the sport of Muay Thai yeah. to, to be that champ and to offer that fight to Max. Now, on that, I mean, Max is the current, you know, Max is the WBC Australian champion right now. Yeah. So, so he, he's a national champion. So, so, and he has fought um, two very good fighters to win that and to keep, you know, he, fought, he beat Zach Innocent yeah. and Stephen, Stephen Kirk on our shows last year. And you guys know how good Zach is, right? So, um, they're from Riddler's Gym, uh, very, very, for Superbank last year, Zach, the main event in Sydney. So, Zach, Zach is an amazing fighter and, you know, Max beat him. Max, um, Max has got a different level to him that not a lot of people would see. And um, he is, I don't know if you guys have seen much of Max, he's very, very skillful. Yeah. Um, he's got beautiful Muay Thai style. He's a stylist. He won't rush in and bang with Roy. He'll be very patient. And uh, he, he's, I mean, I love counter fighters. Anyone that can fight, fight in the back foot with, with such skill and grace is just beautiful to watch, right? And Max is one of those fighters. But... Um, Max can turn it on as well, yeah. and that's what makes this fight exciting. If he couldn't do that, if he didn't have that uh, that string to his bow, um, uh, maybe it wouldn't be such an exciting fight. But if Roy is going to pressure on Max, Max will pressure back. Yeah. He won't just sit there. He won't sit there in the back foot and let. He won't let Roy tee off on him. And um, you know, and, you know, Max only has to wear a few of those whip kicks from Roy on the body or the arms, and um, you know that'll that'll you know you can't cop that all, all for five rounds. So he's going to have to give something something back. So, yeah, Max is very schoolful. Um, you know, Roy, I, I, I could be talking out of school here. Max is strong. You only have to look at Max's legs, but I, I dare say Roy's probably a bit stronger than Max. Um, you know, Roy's very, very strong in his legs and his upper body. So, you know, it'll be, um, you know, uh, is Max, I mean, I don't think there's a better body kicker in, in the country than Roy, or, or he's one of the best body kickers. So, Max like definitely. You've ever seen in Australia. Yep. Okay. Big call. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That, that's massive. Yeah. He, he's definitely got that whip kick. I, I've seen it firsthand. Refing, I hear it when I'm right there. Um, so, so yeah. So it, it, it's a step up for Max. Yes, but I don't think it's a bigger gap as what people think. Is what I'm trying to say. Then, like, you can't underestimate someone like Max. That's just got like you know, you know, he'd be a real Muay Thai fan. Would have looked up to Roy. Um, oh, a lot. Yeah. and like, yeah, nothing to lose. Nothing to lose here. Step yep. up and fight a true legend like um, Roy Wills. Yeah. That's a dangerous place to be in for a, a young guy like him. I find that really exciting. Yeah, and look, um, you know, someone who's who's good on pads doesn't make them a good fighter. But to get a stylistically look at Max, everyone hop onto our Muay Thai Grand Prix Australia Facebook page and look at the interview that uh, Gab did with Max during the week. And there's a bit of a pad session with Max on the pads and. He's just a, he's just great to watch. Even even on the pads, I like watching him. You know, he's um, he's 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 very he's very skillful to watch. You get you get an idea of him just on pads, even you know. Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a beautiful fight. Like I think, uh, like similar to what we're talking about with Marco and Lucas, I just think it's it's a little bit maybe it's kind of a one of the blessings in disguise of having to just keep it local. Is you get this injection of new talent of guys stepping up and and you yeah. know. Just little silver linings. I think that's one of those. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It, it, that's a very good point because had the borders been open, we probably wouldn't have matched George versus Chris or, or even yeah. Max and Roy. So these are fights that, that have happened by default. And um, you know, as, as time's gone on, we've looked at these, these bouts closer and closer. Um, these bouts were staring at us right in the face. 
from from day dot yet we they weren't on our rate at the very beginning you know um so you look at this and you go oh, wow this is just this has worked out great you know this is this is this is this is um this is a, a great um couple matchups especially for for perth fans who know both both uh, of you know these guys really well good good to see and yeah, and I think if you're an Oz Muay Thai fan at all, you're a Perth Muay Thai fan. Like, I just feel like if you're following it, even Australian Muay Thai loosely, you're always like, I'm always watching Perth shows and, and just good on you. It's too good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll have, you have to come yeah. over one day. Yeah, I've, I've got to get over for it. Um, I hopefully can go and fight in Perth, but I'll go over to Perth just to watch, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, well, look out for some announcements for next year and there might be some bouts you might want to come over and and watch then. <laughs> yeah, and like you did touch on it. So we've run through the card. Um, you've touched on it a little bit, but is there anything, Connie, you want to tell us about what's in the pipeline for next year, the rest of the year, what what the uh, the plans are for, you know, yep. bringing, growing MTGP in Australia? Yeah, look, we, we, we um, look, we definitely want to put on um, amazing fights. That, that our, 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 um, our main card bouts, I mean, our whole card, to be honest, but, you know, we, we, we do want to bring the big names. Um, that's something that we'd, we'd really like to do. Um, easier said than done with, um, you know, with, with purses and with, with um, dates that I've got to work out well and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's no mean feat, but, you know, we, we really, you know, we really want to, um, you know, bring some top fighters some to, per- to Perth. And, you know, we believe there's some great names out there that uh, we'd love to have on our show. Um, you know, uh, Amir uh, Nazir, we had him lined up. He's based in Thailand. Man, we had him lined up against Duke. Um, you know, I'd love to bring Chad Collins to Perth. Um, you know, um, um, that, that's 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 that'd be great for 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 all fight fans, but for Perth people to see Chad fight uh, live would, would be amazing. Um, we've got some 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 bigger names in Thailand, A class ties who aren't on. Uh, say one FC, for instance, that are um, fighting still main events in stadiums. Um, Gavs and talks with those guys now. We probably won't release those names because it might not happen. We might, might make us look stupid, but um, we're, cer- we're certainly having chats with those guys. And um, you know, I, I really, um, I really, there's some. You know, we don't have favourites, but there's some really good guys in Perth. I think deserve uh, some some good shots. Um, George Mann is probably one of them if he wins. If he does win this next fight, I mean, if Chris wins this next fight, then you know we'd love to give Chris some amazing opportunities next year. But I think George really, um, you know, George should be he should be up there fighting for a world title um, in the next in the next year. Or two, in my view, I think he's just dropped out of the top ten of the WBC rankings purely because he's you know been inactive. Um, but um, I, I, he's he's one person that if he gets back up there in the rankings. Um, He's, um, you know, we'd love to see him fight the world champion at 72 and a half kilos. You guys know who that is? Who's at the moment? Um, what's his name? Um, Borgman. What's his first name? Um, he's a beast man. Wow, oh, what's his name? Yeah, I think 72.5. Is it, um, is it Eunice? Eunice Borgman? Is that his name? Uh, yeah, uh, Yusuf Borgman. Yusuf, yeah, Borgman. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, I don't know his name, but I know I know his style. I've watched him yeah. fight many times, and um, you know, you know that that'll be that'll be a dream bout. It, 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 it may not happen, but um, yeah, that would there's, be a, mm, there's a little taste, but I'll, I'll, it's very hard to elaborate. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know, but that's a, a look. Obviously, big plans, big things in the works. Um, yeah, it's cool to see. It's good to see that um, that kind of compromise between um, how invested you guys are in growing WA talent. But also at the same time that the way that you guys really want to bring you're talking about elite stadium fighters, you're talking about guys uh, of you know um, Yusuf's caliber. Like if we could get uh, fights with those guys on on Australian shores, that would be amazing. And it grows the sport of the world level to just allow yeah uh, allow our yeah, guys yeah. Those opportunities. And and you know it may not be that bout, but there's there's plenty of other divisions and and fights yeah. that we'd love. I mean, we want to give them all, all a chance. I mean, I mean, yeah, this uh, you know bringing Liam bringing Liam to Perth is certainly our number one priority. Yeah. And um, I, I, you know, we we definitely want that fight to be with Roy. Um, but if it's not Roy, we'll make that fight happen with someone else. You know, Jordan Godfrey is a is a huge name in Australia. Chad Collins is a lot of people worthy of of that fight. So um, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll we'll talk to their people and do whatever we can. But I really love to bring Iman Barlow back as well, man. She's she's amazing. I don't know if you saw her fight uh, yeah, last right. last year. She's you know she's she's elite. She's yeah. world class elite. One of the, one of the best females in the world. So 
um, yeah, would love to bring her back as well. Do you have someone in mind for her? I know she's come she's come over to this part of the world and she's fought um, Yolanda and, and then Brooke. Do you have uh, someone in mind? Yeah. Um, I do. It's, it's hard to say. Look, there's a couple of good girls that are signed to 1FC. Yeah. Um, yeah Australian in particular, which is probably would make that a tough matchup now that Aman signed with one FC. Yeah. So, um, so look, you know, it, 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 look, if it's not an Australian, we'll bring someone else. We'll bring a tie. We'll bring an A-class tie. You know, um, it's not, not the smartest business model. You want to have a local fighting, a champion, uh, because it obviously it helps, helps you fill the venue. But if it means, I mean, we, we, we did Aman versus book books, not a Perth girl. We put that fight on yeah. that, that that's, as a promoter, if you put your promoter's hat on and you just want to talk dollars, that that's, that was a silly fight to put on. Um, but we didn't do it for that reason. We we just knew that was going to be a great fight for Muay Thai. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're not afraid to do that again as well. If we have to bring someone in at that A-class level for mom, then, you know, we'll do it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you were touching on as well. So for, for this show coming up, it's, it's I think I've read it's sold out now. So, so the night show is sold out. Um, and although, although saying, oh, the show sold out sounds amazing, uh, that's not really... Um, mm. You know, it's great that it is sold out, but it's not really anything that we've done anything special. Um, we're very restricted in the numbers. So we're only allowed to have 600 people. The, uh, we changed to this venue, Curtin Stadium, because it holds 3,000 people. And with bringing Liam Harrison to Perth, we thought we might have been a chance to get close to that. Um, but of course, the numbers had been restricted to 600. So, you know, we had almost double that in the last show at a smaller venue. So, you know, um, when we say it's a sellout, we don't mean to be sounding like we're gloating or anything because we're not because it's only 600 people so um so that because of that reason yes it's sold out if if, if it wasn't for that I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't be sold out yet it would still be selling tickets on the door on the night and all that kind of stuff which we, we're not doing now because it's it is sold but the daytime show um you know that's not sold out yet so there's still there's still tickets uh there's still the ga stadium seats available and i think we've got about uh, we're down to about 10 tables left so we think that'll probably we'll probably sell out the tables uh this week um, and um, yeah, there's still there's, there's still quite a few of the, the stadium seats. So yeah, that they're um, they're available online or, or tables through the gyms. And you know, if it's not sold out, you know, we'll talk to the venue and see if we can open up uh, tickets for door sales. But um, certainly, that's not across the line yet. But we hope that we can do that. Definitely. And <clears throat> so yeah, what about us poor sods. Is there is there a live stream for <laughs> some people like us to watch? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. We've got to have um, got to have a live stream. In fact, the production side of things is something that we've um, we've really uh, want to concentrate on moving forward. So we've got uh, live combat sports. Adam is going to be um, doing the back end of stuff based in Melbourne for the show. He can't come to Perth. Um, we've got a production team who's very experienced with Foxtel and the Green Machine promotions with Danny Green fights. So we've got that crew doing um, doing doing our show. We've actually um, got an extra cameraman this show, so there's going to be going to be some different angles. So uh, we've got we've got we've got three three cameras running instead of two, um, which is which is pretty cool. Um, and a very experienced um, uh, pr production team, and you know this this team of live stream are very experienced with local footy and you know a, a state hockey and all that kind of stuff, as well as as well as the boxing with Danny Green shows. So. Um, yeah, we've got a really, uh, we've got a pretty good team there. We've got some, got some good commentators. We've got Brett Benetti from Radio 6PR and 6IX. He's the local combat sports journalist um, in WA. On, he's always on radio, um, you know, when, when there's a big boxing fight or MMA or Muay Thai fight, he's the one they always bring in to interview to talk about it. So he's our MC for the day show and then he's our head commentator for the night show. And commentator alongside him will be um, uh, some people that we've had on our show before giving their expert um, you know, Muay Thai comments. I've, I've condensed the amount of people we have this time because when you've got too many people coming in and out, uh, it, it changes up too much each fight. So we've got uh, we've got Kaylee Reese, yeah, who's cool. a great commentator. I've got uh, I've got Minnie T, Minnie T, oh, um, awesome. commentating, who's really good. Um, Daniel Dawson and uh, and myself. So between us, we'll be sharing the mics with uh, with Brett Benetti, who'll be you know he's kind of like the pro on the microphone if you yeah. like to keep it keep it flowing. That and then lot. that helps a lot. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Rather than just having two Muay Thai people, which we did last year, um, you know, trying the best because we're all new. We're all new at commentating, you know. So um, it's, I, I brought in Brett to just to, um, you know, hopefully you guys, the fans, can hear a difference, add a bit more professionalism to it, but still have the expert Muay Thai commentators there to give their their their, uh, their view of the fight as it's happening. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I think that commentary team will be 
amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I'll be in front of the TV. Today. Kaylee's awesome, man. Kaylee's an awesome commentator. She, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't expect anything less with her, her, her uh, repertoire and on, on her resume, what she's achieved in her life in Muay Thai. So she, you know, she she breaks it up really, really well and has a good eye for it. And as does Minnie T and Daniel. And I'm just the hack that's trying to uh, follow in their footsteps. <laughs> that's all right. We, we, we know that feeling, don't yeah. we? Yeah, <laughs> we've been commentary hacks before. <laughs> yeah yeah look I've, I've done a few now and uh, you get better every time certainly my first one wasn't that good but you get better and more comfortable at it and you get to dissect things a bit better my, the last show in november i only got a chance uh obviously running around like a headless chalk i only commentated on the one fight that was ben warsfold versus tomaso i did that with uh with with kaylee so this this show i'm going to have a bit more structure to myself to try and keep myself not being a headless chalk and i want to uh yeah do do, do a bit more this time around yeah, great, excellent. So, look, well, <clears throat> I think we covered it all. I mean, it was great. It was great talking to you. Like, yeah, really. we, we could do it. It's like it's one, yeah, really another great. episode again. We could go another hour if, if we if we had the time to do it. No, but like sure. um, for the, the for um Darius show for Muay Thai Grand Prix, people are listening from that one. I'll be putting the link for the for the live stream in the show notes and on the YouTube thing. So, obviously. Yeah. You like Muay Thai, you should be fucking watching. That's that's the, that's the gist of it, really. It <laughs> yeah, and, and, and just just for um for people who who uh, can't catch the live stream, we'll be doing obviously our regular uh, Facebook updates. But but look out for our post fight winner interviews that we did last year. Yeah. Um, so do you remember that? So so Mudzi from Muay Thai interviews, he actually trains at the pit. He um he'll be ringside for each bout, taking notes and just have, taking mental notes. And uh, unfortunately for the winners, they don't get much chance to celebrate with family and friends because we whisk them away to our media room. And um, Mudsy will get, put them through a quick interview. And it's, it's really good, really, yeah. you know, really compelling to hear their thoughts on the fight straight after the adrenaline, you know, their heart, they're still sweating, their, their heart's still beating hard, you know, and they just, you know, out of been out of the ring for a minute or two. And here they are getting, getting questioned by, by our, uh, our interview, if you like, in Mudsy. And you know, we've been them through Facebook, not through the live stream that's, that you've got to pay for. So that's all done on the Facebook page. So yep. look out for those. At least you'll be able to keep up to date with the winners um, if you're not watching the live stream. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's great content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for this. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. yeah. But have you got any future plans to break out into other combat sports? Like boxing? Um, yeah. No, we don't have plans. It's not something that we've discussed. We're not, we're, we're not afraid to perhaps put on, um, you know, the odd, you know, the odd boxing fight. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I'll tell you right now, I'd, I'd love an opportunity to put Lucas Brown on to, to fight a, a big heavyweight okay. boxing, boxing fight. You know, Lucas Brown, um, I'm a fan of, and he's a great guy. And I was having some having recent chats. fights, isn't he? Can't, can't, he can't get fights. I, I, feel, I feel, you know, he's 41 years of age and I just... I feel for the guy, you know, it'd, it'd be great to put him on our show. You know, that, does that take something away from us by being a grand, a Muay Thai show? It probably does. So we'd have to, we'd have to factor those things into it. Um, but, you know, Gavin and I know Muay Thai. We don't know MMA and uh, we, we don't know boxing. So, it's, you know, sometimes you've got to be a little bit careful. Uh, we'd probably rather just, you know, just thinking out loudly, um, probably just rather concentrate on our Muay Thai show. And then one day, if we think we're, you know, good enough to, to branch out or even have the time for that, we, we may look at it, but it's not on our uh, radar right now. You know, we're still fanboys for Muay Thai. So, so yeah. you know, we, we, we still want to just, um, just stick to what we know at this stage. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, good. Awesome. So, yeah, Darius, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Good chat from there. And um, best of luck to the show. As like you said, hopefully, hopefully you're not going to pull your hair out too much from there and it just goes smooth as possible. <laughs> yeah, look, thanks very much for having us, guys. And, uh, you know, to, to everyone listening, um, be, be, sure to, be sure to check it out. And um, if I can just say a very quick thank you to you guys for, um, for, for yeah, um, having me on and, and, and helping discuss our show and, and promote it, I suppose. So thank you very much. Uh, a big thank you to Gav and Nick, um, my, my partners here, Gav and Nick, uh, his wife, who, who um, have been amazing with the show and to all the coaches, to all our gyms and to all our fighters uh, for, for being and representing us on our show. Thank you. And, and to all our fans and our sponsors, man. I don't know if you've, if you've looked at our uh, posters, but you look at all the sponsors that we've got, you know, they've been amazing. I mean, we've even got a, sponsor in new south wales you know uh from uh, orange motor group in uh, in orange new south wales is is one of our main sponsors jamie was the dealer principal there he had the car dealership he's um he's something board as a sponsor as has um you know um 
middle Mitsubishi in, 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 in Perth and, you know, Formula Tech and, and Lend Me Finance Company. And we've got, a, um, we've got uh, um, Hirsch, who's a, who trains at, at Riddler's and he's also sponsored us. And then his mate, um, here is a dentist. He's doing all the mouth guards. And, you know, we've got some great sponsor partners um, um, on board. So we, we, thank all our, we thank all our sponsors for sure. Awesome. Sounds stellar. All right, cool. All right, guys. I mean, that'll do us for the day from there. So just remember to always share, subscribe, like all our shit. Okay. As always. <laughs> we <yeah>. will. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and also more tight grand free Australia, follow them and all their great content as well. All right, guys. See ya. See ya. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you.